Solid Edge ST4 has some great new tools to help you develop your products faster. As ever though, the most important thing is understanding how it all works. Only then can you take advantage of it and use it to help improve your design process. In this tutorial, we'll highlight just a few of the enhancements that are waiting for you when you install this latest version of Solid Edge. Firstly, let's look at some changes that have been made to the way we can control view quality and some new styles that have been added. The settings for arc smoothness can be found in Solid Edge options and in the view section. There are four different settings. These are off, low, standard and high. If we have it set to off as it is here, as we zoom into a circular edge, we can see that the smoothness of the arc is not adjusted. However, if we go back and set it to a high value, when we zoom in, the arc gets smoother as you would expect. This setting works hand in hand with the arc smoothness setting within the same dialog. If we increased the arc smoothness setting, the arcs and circular edges would become even smoother. Bear in mind that the higher the setting with both of these options, the slower the display manipulation will be. Also file open times will be slightly longer. Moving on to the new view styles, there are three new styles to choose from. These include default, high quality and rendering. Selecting one basically sets the view properties appropriately for the style. We can see that if we set the high quality one, it turns on the reflective floor and various other reflections and shadows. If we look at the format view dialog, we can see what has been set. There are also override switches in the star group to turn things like the shadows and reflective floor on and off. The edge display colour can also be controlled here and it's possible to switch the single colour edges on and off as well as choose an appropriate colour. Bear in mind that the new styles will only be available in the new files generated using the new ST4 templates. If new files are generated using old or existing ST3 templates, then they will not be available. To overcome this, you can always copy the new ST4 styles into your existing templates or other documents using the organizer. If we access the style command, we can see the 3D view styles. The organizer can then be used to select another document to copy the view styles into. If we were in an old pre-ST4 file, one option would be to browse to a new ST4 template file and copy the styles from it. Going back to the styles dialog, notice that it has been enhanced so that the style types are presented in a visible list rather than using a drop down menu. This will reduce the number of mouse clicks required to access the desired section. Also the most recently used style type will be remembered between dialog sessions. Remember here it would be a simple task to create our own view styles if we needed to. In addition to the new 3D view styles, we also have a whole new range of face styles. These are designed to be more realistic with face colours, edge colours, textures, shininess and reflectivity. These face styles are also defined in the ST4 material.mtl file. In order to apply these styles to a pre-ST4 file, we could once again use the organiser. We're already using some of these styles in this assembly but we'll select this part and change it to an aged bronze so we can see the results. This next example looks at the new synchronous enabled rib and web network commands. We already have some predefined sketches we can use for ribs and webs. We'll start by placing a rib. We'll use this profile at the back of the part and hit accept. The rib will preview and allow us to change its direction by using the bearing points on the steering wheel. Its thickness can be defined by using the on-screen field. Once created, if we select the rib or any one of its faces, we can then select the edit handle to change its thickness. Since it's a synchronous feature, picking one face of the rib and moving it will maintain the appropriate distance to its other face as shown.
Next we'll create a web network. We'll show Sketch 7. To choose the sketch geometry, we'll set the Select Mode to Single and then Window Pick all the lines and arcs in the sketch. Then we'll preview the feature. The direction could now be changed by selecting the graphical arrow handle. The current direction is correct, so we'll leave it alone. If we want to define a draft angle for the web network, we can select the option from the command ribbon. Then we can set both the thickness and draft angle using the on-screen fields. The direction of the draft angle can be toggled by selecting the arrow. Once created, if we pick the web network, we can edit any one of its parameters as shown by changing the thickness and the draft angle. If we pick one single face in the web network, then select one of the edit handles, such as the thickness, the edit dialog contains an option to edit just the selected faces. If we pick this and change the value, it will only affect that set of faces and not the rest of the web network. The same would apply to the draft angle. We'll show Sketch 12 and use it to create another web network. This time we'll apply a finite depth. Once this is done, if we edit the web network by selecting it in the Pathfinder, the parameter for the finite depth appears too. On the other hand, if we select a face in the web network graphically, it does not appear. The depth edit handle will only appear if we pick the bottom face. Bear in mind that this is the only way to edit these parameters. We cannot add PMI dimensions to the geometry and use these to drive the thickness or draft angle. Just like we did with the rib, the webs within a feature can be moved or rotated around using the steering wheel. As we do this, of course live rules will pick up conditions that exist with other faces in the same feature. If we have a case where multiple elements are connected together tangentially, they will move as a rigid set. The whole time, the thickness and draft angles are maintained. Next we'll cover some improvements that have been made to the Migrate to Synchronous functionality in the sheet metal environment. We'll take all the features of this ordered part and then move them to Synchronous by selecting the last feature in the tree and choosing Move to Synchronous from the shortcut menu. By default, the PMI dimensions that are created will be hidden. We'll just show them all. During the move, Solid Edge first looks for the appropriate virtual vertices to bind to. If none are found, the dimension will try to bind to the nearest regular vertex. These PMI dimensions can obviously be used to edit and control the model in the normal way. There are however some specific cases where the dimensions cannot bind to the geometry. For instance, here we have a tab which was originally dimensioned within the ordered mode. Then this flange was created with a bend outside condition. When these features moved to synchronous, the tab dimension was created but not actually attached to anything. It was created as a dangling dimension. The same is true for some of the angled dimensions. All these dangling dimensions have been placed into a user defined set so that they are quick and easy to locate as a group. For instance, we may just want to delete them. In our case, we'll just delete the angled ones. With the linear dimension, we can reattach it by selecting it, then holding down the ALT key and dragging one of its handles to the desired key point. It could then be used to modify the model in the normal way. In addition to the creation of the PMI dimensions, any profiles used for a feature 
are now converted to used synchronous sketches. These are given the same name as the original ordered feature for easy identification. The next example shows how to use the new range relationships in an assembly. We'll start by activating all the parts. Then use the drag component command. Notice how the stepper assembly can rock from side to side and the cylinders move appropriately. The problem we have here is that we can take them past their natural operating range. We'll fix this with a range limit. To help select the faces, we'll apply this section view. The workflow for creating a range relationship is very similar to placing a fixed offset relationship. From the command ribbon, all we need to do is change from fixed to range. This provides fields where the minimum and maximum values can be defined. Here we'll set a minimum of 43 and a maximum of 84. Then select the faces in the parts. Once done, Notice how the part is still under constrained. This is because the range relationship still allows a degree of freedom. Going back to the drag component command, we can see that the range relationship will allow the part to be moved anywhere in between the two range values that we've set. It will stop at either end of this range and will not travel past these points. We could also apply a range to an existing relationship. We can simply edit the relationship and then switch it from a fixed or floating type to the range type and again apply the appropriate values. For now we'll leave this one as a floating offset. Remember the same options are available for other relationships such as connect, parallel, angle and tangent. For instance, applying a range angle relationship will be a good way of defining a door hinge. One final thing to note is that the range values will only solve with drag component and motor animations when the no analysis or detect collision options are set. They are not supported when we use the physical motion option. If this option is selected, a warning dialog will be displayed stating that all range relationships will be fixed at their current values. After the analysis, the relationship will be set back to a range relationship. This next example shows how to use some of the extensive new formatting options within the parts list or table commands. This drawing already has a parts list created, so we'll focus on it. We'll start by editing its properties. We'll access the title tab and add an appropriate title. We now have complete control over the text in the title and can define the text font and its alignment. We'll apply these changes to see the results. We can also allow the aspect ratio of the text to auto adjust to fit the width of the table. When we have this option set, when the length of the text string exceeds the space available for the title width, the aspect ratio of the text is compressed so that it fits in the space provided without wrapping onto a new line. Additional control has also been given to column headers. The show headers and the position options are the same as before. However, we can now set a fixed row height for the column header, rather than have it derived from the height of the text in the cell. The show two rows option allows us to split the header for the currently selected column into two separate rows, much like we've already done with the mass columns on the right of the list. We'll do this for the quantity column. When this option is set, the row number setting allows us to define the text which appears in each section of the split column header. We'll apply these changes to see the results. The Format Cells command allows us to control the alignment and orientation of the text. Again, this is with respect to the currently selected column. We'll centre the text for the one we've just added.
We'll then select the item number column and look at its formatting. The Adjust Text to Column Width option allows the aspect ratio of the header text to be adjusted so that it fits within the width of the column and does not wrap onto additional lines. The Merge with Next Header option will merge the currently selected column header with the one directly to its right. We'll set this one back to what it was before. If we repeat the process on the mass column, in this scenario, since we have the row number set to 1, it's the top portion of the column which gets merged. We'll select the title column and look at its formatting. We'll make it central. We can also control the orientation of the text in the header. It can be horizontal as it is now. It can be rotated. Or it can be vertical. We have similar control over the data text within the table. The Format Cells command allows control over the alignment and we can also choose the Adjust to Fit option so that the text does not wrap onto multiple lines as before. Also the Merge Vertical Cells option is available. This will merge together any vertical cells that have the same value as shown in the Quantity column. This SolidEdge tutorial was compiled from content delivered in the SolidEdge ST4 update training course available at Solid Mastermind. This consists of a series of online video sessions. To find out more, visit www.solidmastermind.com forward slash go to forward slash ST4. Many thanks for watching.